What are the risks of scoliosis surgery? Scoliosis surgery is a type of spinal fusion or spinal surgery that involves fusing the spine in a particular way to trying to stop the scoliosis from progressing. And what it does is it fuses the most top tilted vertebra and to the most bottom most tilted vertebra and fuses all the vertebra in between by attaching rods and screws while bone grafts take place to hold the spine in this fixed position. How many vertebra that are fused would depend on the size of curve or location of the curve. And in some cases, if there's two curves, it can include multiple areas of the spine. It can go from say, you know, lower lumbar to upper thoracic spine, where most of the cervical, most of the spine will be fused into one solid bone. Now with all surgeries, just like scoliosis surgery or spinal fusion or scoliosis fusion surgery, there is risks associated with it. And when we look at the spine, how it's part of your central nervous system, meaning the bones of your spine are protecting something. And what it's protecting is the spinal cord that runs through the spine, the bones of the spine itself, and then the nerves that branch out into the entire body. And the spinal cord and the nerve system is what connect your brain to your body and it's what sends signals back and forth. So therefore, since we're installing screws and rods and fusions in the very uh, system that controls and regulates your entire body, this surgery can be particularly risky and invasive. The risk associated with, the, with spinal function could be very significant because it immobilizes the spine. But we also know that it can include other significant things like nerve damage, infection, blood loss, it can be adverse reaction to the hardware. And some of the per perhaps the most significant dangers with scoliosis surgery are unknown, meaning really long-term effects of scoliosis surgery, we really don't know the long-term effects. Now, we do know some long-term effects, but we do not know all of them. When I, when I talk about long-term, 20, 30, 40 years post-surgery, what are we looking at? And the truth is we really don't know. But we know for a fact, long-term risks definitely affect range of motion and flexibility of the spine. We know scoliosis surgery is non-functional when it comes to spinal movement or flexibility. They are sacrificing alignment by putting the spine into a, into a straighter position and sacrificing progression of the scoliosis, meaning it's more likely not gonna worsen as significantly with, with fusion than it would if they didn't have fusion. But what they're sacrificing is now flexibility and motion of the spine which can impact quality of life. So we're changing one thing for another, which is potentially some people will say that's worth it. And for other patients, they'll say, well, that I would keep my flexibility and my motion and not have scoliosis surgery. We also know the spine could potentially be weaker and more vulnerable to injury with rods and screws in the spine, meaning traumas and injuries that may not affect somebody as severely could affect this person with scoliosis surgery and rods as a result of the injury. Hardware malfunction can definitely occur over time. And if considering that these patients are normally very young when they're having scoliosis surgery, at the time of fusion, they can be 12, 13, 14 years old. And in fact, if it's even done younger, we have to consider growth and development can cause hardware failure. But really the, the hardware has a long time to perform optimally inside this person's body. And there could be adverse reactions. There could be increased pain at the site of fusion, even at the onset. And we don't know how much pain or discomfort will occur later on as a result of the spinal fusion. But once a spine is fused, and this is the thing, it's that it's fused for life. There are some things that you can change your mind on, but scoliosis surgery is not one of them. Spinal fusion is definitely something that's gonna impact the structure and the function of the spine for the rest of your life. And for whatever reason, it is unsuccessful and there's something that you want to try to change, the only recourse in most cases is more surgery and the risk of more fusion and the risk of more problems that are involved with scoliosis surgery. Now, the big question here is scoliosis surgery always needed, like if you have scoliosis, is there's no other option that you must have scoliosis or surgery. And the truth is that's not true. Scoliosis is definitely a structural condition. So we know it must be impacted on a structural level, but surgery isn't the only way to do that. There are many cases of scoliosis don't, want, don't require surgical intervention. In fact, I always like to say there's two main treatment responses. There's non-surgical treatment responses and surgical treatment responses. And which, which path you choose will really dictate your outcome. And when we look at non-surgical treatment options, we know they're much more conservative and they're much less invasive. So scoliosis conservative treatment options don't carry the same risk. There are scoliosis treatments that 
that are safe and natural and non-invasive. And conservative treatment options offer non-surgical treatment options. So they don't carry all these negative long-term effects on health and function, meaning spinal fusion, motion, multiple surgeries. And when we look at conservative treatment options, they typically integrate many conservative options that patients may use for spinal health and well-being, meaning condition-specific chiropractic care, physical therapy and scoliosis exercises, corrective bracing, home rehabilitation, scoliosis-specific exercises, and even there could be you know, gait therapy, rehabilitation, neuromuscular education, and all these treatments are non-surgical. And the goal with these surgeries is not just trying to stop the scoliosis from worsening, but really trying to reduce the size of curvature and most of all, prioritizing the natural strength and function of the spine. So this is a more functional approach when it comes to scoliosis, where spinal fusion is really a non-functional approach. Now, both treatments could have an emotional impact on the patient, meaning going through scoliosis treatment that requires you to do exercises and therapy and rehabilitation that you wear a brace has an emotional impact, but so is going through a major surgery and trauma could have a major emotional impact. So both things kind of sit there. What you would have to decide is which one would have the least emotional impact on you. And that will help you determine which one, which type of treatment will be best for you. People that look at treating a scoliosis that don't require surgery, normally these patients are looking to preserve spinal function. And we, we look at understanding how we want to treat a scoliosis. We know there's never treatment guarantees, but when we look at prog progressive conditions like scoliosis, the sooner we start scoliosis treatment, especially in a conservative world, the better the response will be and the less likely you're gonna to have to be considering a more invasive treatment like spinal fusion. So we always recommend early diagnosis, early treatment to be as proactive as possible towards the progressive nature of scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions about this topic or other scoliosis questions, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish new videos just like this.